Good afternoon, grade 12s. Welcome to our business studies class. Today we'll be looking at securities. So this is part one of securities. This is the new chapter, basically, uh, uh, boys and girls. Um, the last few days, we're still looking at your uh, quality and total management quality, right? But now we are starting the new chapter of which is investment securities, right? Grade 12s, welcome to our 11th lesson. And my name is Hector S. Ngosi. Now, grade 12s, you need to know, or by now you should know that uh, before you start any chapter, basically, you must uh, 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 know the learning outcomes, meaning the things that you need to know by the end of this chapter. Does it make sense? So now I want to take you through, guys, so that I can show you uh, different learning outcomes when it comes to um, securities, basically, right? So we are recapping. I know some of you have dealt with this uh, at, at school or in your study time or whatsoever. But now what I want to highlight is the learning outcomes basically for this chapter, right? Just need my highlighter before we start so that I can show you the learning outcomes. Just need a green one. Okay. Now, learners must be able to outline or discuss or explain the function of the JSE. We know JSE is your, it's our Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Also, you must be able to investigate a range of available business investment opportunities. You must be able to outline, mention, describe, explain, discuss the following factors that should be considered when making investment decisions, your return on investment, your risk, the investment term or period, the inflation rate must be looked at when we looking at these ones. Also, we need to look at the taxation. So we need to look at the taxation basically. Uh, sorry. Uh, just a minute. Uh, okay. Okay, we need to look at the taxation, basically. We need to look at the liquidity, the personal budget, the investment planning factors, the uh, um, volatility or fluctuations on investment markets. We need to explain or discuss the various type of investment opportunities, like your fixed property, your stock fails, your managed portfolio, your venture capital. We're still going to look at that. So guys, this will take us uh, plus or minus eight days to explain this. So we're going to finish it next week, basically, right? Then we also need to be able to explain the risk factors of each type of investment opportunity. We need to explain or discuss or analyze or evaluate positive advantages and, oh, sorry, guys, and uh, negatives, right? We need to be able to do the disadvantages of the following forms of investment, your government or RSA retailer savings, bonds, your unit trust, your shares, your fixed deposit. You must identify the following types of shares from given scenarios or statements. Your ordinary shares, your preference shares, your bonus shares, your founder's shares. You need to be able to explain or outline or discuss types of preference shares, mention the rights of ordinary on preference shareholders, Identify types of performance shareholders from the given scenario. Also, you need to be able to compare or differentiate between ordinary shares and preference shares. You need to define uh, or explain the meaning of debentures, dividends, capital gains, simple interest, and compound interest. Um, there's so many. I know it looks tense right now, but we going. I'm going to break this down for you guys. Uh, so you need to know to differentiate or distinguish between simple and compound interest. Calculate your simple and compound interest. Aha. Uh -huh. So very important, guys, as here you'll be needing your calculators, right? You'll be needing your calculators here. Uh, you must recommend the best investment option based on your calculation, basically, right? All right, boys and girls, let's look. Uh, so for today's lesson, we'll be looking purely on, 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 on terms, you know, uh, I need to give you 
the definitions of the terms that we'll be looking under this chapter, basically, right? So very important, boys and girls, for you to understand the terms and definitions of this chapter because it's going to come uh, in handy while we start with the chapter in deep. You know, once we get into deep stuff, you know, it's going to make sense. So I'm going to take you step by step uh, with all the terms that you need to know for this chapter and you need to know their meanings and how, where to use them and how to use them. I'm telling you now, boys and girls, by the time I've just explained all these terms, by the time we start uh, outlaying the chapter or breaking down the chapter, everything will just make sense because you would know when you talk about investment, what it is, when you talk about the share, what it is, when you talk about a long-term investment, what is it, fixed rate and stuff like that. So I'm going to start from investment, telling you what is an investment, who, do, who uses the investment on a lighter level, that when we go deep, everything's just going to make sense, right? Now, boys and girls, let's start with the first term, investment, right? So, boys and girls, let's look at the first term. So the first term says investment, and its definition, it says to you, investing or saving money in order to yield better returns, right? So that's your investment. Now, we know that majority of us, we are investing. Sometimes some people, they are investing, but they're not aware that they're investing, basically, right? So your investment, guys, it's when you put money. It doesn't have to be money per se, but... It can be anything. You can invest in jewelry. Um, there are people who invest in jewelry, meaning that since we know that jewelry appreciates its value, some people, they buy jewelry now in 2020 and they keep it for their children as an investment. Uh, the same jewelry that you're buying now, it probably in the next 20 years or in the next 30 years, that jewelry will double its value or will triple its value, you know. So that's another form of investment. Investment is anything that has a monetary value. It doesn't have to be actual cash, you know. Other people, they also invest with wines, you know, like your wine and whiskeys, you know. Um, they buy their wines and whiskeys. We know that the more you keep the wine, the expensive it will become. Same applies the more you keep the whiskey, uh, the more expensive it becomes. So other people, they buy bottles of wines now. And then they store them, they keep them in a safe place. Like, for instance, a person will buy a wine for 2002. Uh, and trust me, the wine that you bought in 2002, and if you were to drink it in, 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 in or you, if you were to sell it in, in, in the next uh, uh, 15 years, that bottle of wine will be super expensive. And that's another form of investment. Does it make sense? By now, you know... Uh, uh, um, what an investment is. Other people, they invest in shares, they go buy shares uh, in a certain company, then that's also an investment. In, in return of those shares, they'll get dividends of which is what uh, uh, the company will pay out to the shareholders. Does it make sense? So other people, they do the actual investments where they take uh, maybe 10,000, they put the, it in the bank, then they make it a fixed investment so that uh, they don't touch it. They're just going to see it after five years, after it has just accumulated. And nowadays now, the most important investment, um, giving you a minute, think about it. What is the popular investment that people do lately? I'm giving you just a minute, think about it. And please let me know as soon as you've got an answer, grade 12. I'll be waiting for you and your time starts now.
all right guys um i'm back and i hope um you managed to get that form of investment that i said you guys must think about it uh huh i know no one maybe knows about it but let me tell you something bitcoin majority of the people nowadays guys they invest in bitcoin you know that's another form of investment people buy bitcoin then bitcoin will accumulate its money in the next five or six years basically right then people they will they will withdraw their bitcoins and having a lot of money and forex and stuff like that all right at least i told you all types of forms of investment that uh, a person might be exposed to now let's look at the second term your jse jse stands for Spec security exchange or joint spec stock exchange is the same thing so your security and stock weight uh, works the same you know it is a formal market trading in shares very good right very important <laughs> i'm used to teaching in class so that's why i say very good basically i wanted to say very important trading in shares are comprising of all public companies that have been listed very important so it is a formal market so this market trading is trading in shares so all your public companies right uh in order uh for a company to, to, to in order for us shareholders people who wants to uh, invest shares in a certain company that company must register or it must be listed under your stock, your joint spec stock or joint spec security exchange or joint spec stock exchange, right? So in order for the company to trade in shares, they must be listed in the joint spec stock exchange, right? Remember that guys, or a company has two options to raise their capital. It's either they can sell shares to the public, meaning they can issue shares to the public or what they can do they can borrow a loan right but now only companies can do that but in a sole proprietor the way in which you can get cash or you can get your capital is to borrow a loan so only companies they can issue shares only public companies they can issue shares and they can be listed under the joint spec stock exchange so your jse gives you a security and it also it tells you uh uh, what level that company is uh, it is listed under which level and stuff like that right so if the company you want to invest in is listed in your jse you must always go for it because you know that your shares are secured your investment is secured basically the one that we call it to spec security exchange or stock exchange now let me explain what is a share so a share guys it's something that is intangible basically that you buy you cannot touch or see it that's a share basically right it gives investors the opportunity to obtain part of ownership of the company right so you are owning the company basically right you're saying you buy shares now when you buy shares from a certain company right it's like you're investing because you're going to buy those shares right and say uh the very same shares you're going to uh, uh um they're going to pay you maybe a dividend of five francs per share meaning if let's say you buy one thousand shares so one thousand times five friends so you do the math therefore those are your returns that's your dividends so you're getting an income right and then they will tell you that maybe each share is around eight rands each and uh, uh, and so forth right and also shares it's your owner's equity basically right and also now let's explain the capital market or security market it is the market for securities or shares where companies and the government can raise a long-term funds right so when we speak about capital markets or security markets is it the market for securities or shares where companies can and the government can raise so is the combination of companies and government can raise a long-term fund that's where we speak about your market your capital market or your securities market 
Now, boys and girls, let's look at the long-term investment. Now, with your long-term investment or before short-term investment. So a short-term investment, we know that it's when you're investing for one, year, uh, one month, uh, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months. So it's shorter. So a shorter period, it's less than, shorter than one year, right? So, or shorter than 12 months. And that investment or that form of investment will be regarded as what is your short-term investment because it's less than a year, it's less than 12 months. So anything that is less than 12 months will be regarded as what is your uh, short-term investments. Now let's look at your long-term investment. With your long-term investment is a vice versa of short-term investment. This one is an investment for a period of longer than one year. So you can invest for two years, you can invest for three years, for five years, and so forth, up until to infinity, basically. So we call that a long-term investment. But now, let's say you invest for six months. You just want to buy yourself a computer. And let's say you're going to put, um, for instance, 20,000, not 20,000, uh, 1,000 rent in your bank account every month for six months so that once it reaches 6K, you can go buy yourself a computer. Can you see that type of investment will be regarded as a short-term investment. But now, let's say you're buying a bottle of a wine. Uh, let's say you're buying the 2020 uh, a bottle of a wine, this year's bottle, and you want to sell it after 10 years because now that wine will have a 10-year lifespan. So that 10-year lifespan, basically, boys and girls, is an investment for a period for a long time longer than one year so 10 years it's more than 12 uh 12 months basically right then now let's speak about the fixed rate we know the word fixed boys and girls it means unchanged or constant you know uh or uh independent rate you know uh but it's it's your constant rate it doesn't change unchanged rate you know the rate of return stays the same for the period of of time so so is the rate of return that stays the same for the period of time and that's what we mean by fixed rate so now sometimes banks they do give you a fixed rate uh, and it's always safer to get a fixed rate than a variable rate so a variable rate basically it changes that that one does not stay the same depends on what's happening on the country and stuff like that I more I personally prefer a fixed rate, you know, because a fixed rate, especially when you are paying an, an obligation, fixed rate is nice because you know that it won't fluctuate. It will stay like that. Even after 10 years, if you're still paying that thing, it will be the same. Then accumulated. So accumulated meaning something has been added to something. That's what the word accumulated means. But let's look at this word in terms of business studies. Interest end over the period of uh, over the investment period. So we know that interest end right over the investment period. So that's your accumulated. So if I'm saying I'm accumulating, meaning I'm adding or yes, I'm adding or ending on something basically, right? All right. Now let's look at your simple interest. So when we look at the simple interest. Simple interest is calculated on your original or principal amount invested. So basically your simple interest, guys, it's when you take, it's when you say, okay, I want to invest 100 rands, right? At an interest, at the interest rate of 10%. So you're going to say 100 rands times 10%. That's 10 rands. So that interest of 10 rands, it's your simple interest. So it was just simple because there were no, there were no complications. You just use it based on your principal amount, right? So it is based on your original or principal amount. Now, there's a difference between simple interest and a compound interest. Now let's look at a compound interest. This one is calculated each period, very important. Calculated each period on the original amount, including all interest accumulated during the past period. So this one, each period, you must calculate the interest. So your simple interest, meaning that if that every year your interest is 10 rands, so it's going to be 10 rands for the next 10 years. But the compound does not work like this. So the compound interest basically uses your accumulated amount 
and it's the interest on each year. Does it make sense? So it's still based on your original uh, or principal amount, including all interest accumulated during uh, the past period. So you're going to uh, you're going to calculate this year's interest for year one and get its interest. Then when you go to year two, you don't forget to accumulate or to add year one's interest, right? And bring it to year two. Same applies year three, stuff like that. So this one is compound, is compounded, meaning now it accumulates basically in other ways, right? Now let's look at risk or a degree of uh, financial leverage. So your risk refers to a chance that the invested amount may may reduce in value or lost in total over a period of time due to unforeseen circumstances. Now, guys, I want us to speak a lot about risk. Now, when we look at the risk, basically, boys and girls, um, we know that actually everything is risky, guys. Our investment that we invest, they are risky. Uh, for instance, guys, now we under corona uh, virus pandemic, you know, I'm telling you right now, guys, majority of the companies are losing money. Majority of the companies are shutting down. Just imagine if you were one of the shareholders, you were one of those people who invested lots and lots of thousands uh, of thousands in those companies. You know, guys, um, there's this thing under investment that says don't put your eggs, uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Because should something happen to that basket, all the eggs are going to break. Basically, what does it mean? It means that as much as you are doing your investments, don't invest in one place because there, there is a risk, you know. Um, so you must try it by all means. If you want to invest in shares, take 20% and invest in shares. If you want to invest in, in, in mining, take 20% and put it in mining. If you want to invest in Bitcoin, take 30% and put it in Bitcoin. If you want to invest, let's say, in, in bank, in your bank, your actual banks that you bank with, maybe take 10% and invest there. So don't take your 100% money and put it, let's say, in mining. Should something happen to mining, you lost everything. So as a good investor, you must always try by all means to mitigate risk. But how are you going to mitigate risk? By, uh, by, by uh, divesting your, 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 your investment. In that case, you're going to what? Uh, reduce uh, uh, the risk or mitigate the risk. Because uh, if you divest your investments, I'm telling you now, boys and girls, there are lesser chances for you to lose. Even though you lose, you're just going to lose small portion of all your investments. You're not going to lose everything, basically. So guys, please, 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 risk is there. Uh, anything can happen to your money. Uh, so it's, it's, it's good to, to not put all your eggs in one basket. Rather put your, your eggs in separate baskets because should something happen, all those eggs in one basket will break. So that's where the concept of risk is coming in, right? So risk is something that we, we, we're not waiting for. It's an unforeseen circumstance. Uh, we, we're not going to plan for it. It just comes as it is, guys. Sometimes it may okay. Sometimes it might not even okay. Uh, so it's very important as an investor to watch out for a risk. As they are saying here that it refers, I mean, it refers to the chance that invested amount may reduce in value or lost in the total over a period of time due to unforeseen circumstances. All right, boys and girls. Um, so it's from tomorrow. We'll be looking at functions of the JSE. Can you see now I've touched based on all the necessary uh, uh, concepts that you need to know under this chapter. Now we'll be going into detail as from tomorrow, giving you all the functions of the JSE, how do you see your JSE, things that you need to look at, what does JSE entails and stuff like that. So after you've done that, your life is just going to be easier, boys and girls. And please, 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 I'm always here for you. 
ask questions if needs be. You can always email me. I will try by all means to email to answer your emails maybe every after two hours or so. But I will look at my emails, guys. And don't forget that my email address is in gosihector28 at gmail.com. Tomorrow we'll start from functions of the JSE. From my side, grade 12s, I say good luck and have a lovely evening. Goodbye.